Hey everybody, how's everybody doing? Hope everybody's doing great. Welcome to another video. In today's video, guys, we're going to be talking about replacing your FEP, uh, PFA, whatever sheet you have on your printer. Uh, they're all pretty much exactly the same in terms of the amount of a bajillion screws that you have to undo. And I figured I'd do a video with you guys going through the process of taking it off and putting a new one back on. This is with my Saturn IV Ultra. From all the videos that I've seen, they're all relatively about the, exactly the same, and you guys can probably find other videos out there as well for your particular printer if if this doesn't work for you or if it's very different or if it's, you know, not the same. But, yeah, I'm going to set up here an area and hopefully get a good angle on the camera so you guys can see me take this thing apart, put a new sheet on, and the process of doing that. Uh, it might be a little bit sped up because it just takes me a little bit to get all of these screws out. And... Yeah, guys, so let's go ahead and get it off. Uh, so the reason I'm, I'm, I'm changing mine out is it has these little... I, I don't know if the camera will pick these up. Uh, let's see with my black glove here. The light's a little bright. But essentially, uh, my sheet is relatively new, but it has like these little dark, darkened dots uh, in the sheet that I think are potential to become holes at some point and to try to avoid anything getting on my, sh on my printer and, and damaging any of the insides. I'd rather just go ahead and switch it out now. Uh, and not have to worry about them. There's three little dots right here. I probably can't see because of the, ref the reflection of all of the lights in here. But let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys. So there's just, you're gonna need a couple of things in order to be able to, ch to change the PFA liner for your VAT. Uh, that's gonna be a couple of tools, but you also are most importantly going to need the actual PFA film. You're gonna need a, a silicone mat to put your VAT on, uh, rubber gloves, or, or sorry, your nitro gloves, uh, so that you can go ahead and take this apart. Reason being, this VAT's already been cleaned, but in between the nooks and crannies, in here there's going to be some resin so you want to just be careful you're going to want something to wipe away that little bit of resin that might be in between the the sheet and the vat you're going to want some alcohol to just make sure everything's nice and clean before you put on the new one you're going to need some tools to be able to take out all of the screws in the bottom and you're going to need something uh whichever tool you have or a box cutter to be able to cut the excess off of the actual vat once you get the new one in just be safe with anything sharp. Uh, please be, be very, 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 very careful. Uh, it can hurt you, so just be extremely careful. All right, so first step is going to be to go ahead and flip this guy, and let's start getting some screws off. Just a quick side note, guys. Uh, you can use one of these little uh, magnetic screw holder thingies for the screws that come out. Uh, not all of them are magnetic. So, but it's just nice to have for organizing and, and keeping things out of your way so you don't accidentally drop a screw and then, you know, you have to go out and look for it. So we're going to put all of our screws in here and let's go ahead and get into this. All right, let's get these screws off. Well, first I need to get one of these out, so... what they look like out of the packaging these like they have little protectors on them but as you can see there's no holes so you're gonna have to make the holes once you put it on the, the little part that holds everything together so let's go ahead and take off all the screws so you can see what I'm talking about So all the screws that attach it to the vat, to the actual piece here, have come off. So now these two pieces should separate. So now you have these two, the actual vat, and then the, the thing that holds the PFA. So this is what I was talking about. 
I'll, I'll see if you guys can see that here. There's some resin. Ooh, 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 I trying to focus on the bottom thing. There's some resin here and, and like all around where it actually meets with the vat. So you want to clean that up just to be safe. Just use some alcohol and some wipes and you should be good to go. Just try to keep everything as clean as possible, huh? There we go. Like I just filled this up. Why isn't it working? Get it all nice and clean. Make sure you get all the alcohol out of there. Don't want that stuff leaking. All right, so once you get it nice and clean, Go ahead and set this off to the side. You won't need this for a little bit. Okay, and then you could do the same thing. Just wipe this down. So make sure to get all the all the all the resin off. Just keep everything clean. Get the inside of this guy. There, there. Nice. And some wood cleans. So for this process, if it, if it helps if it helps you feel better, uh, definitely wear a mask. Uh, I know some people don't really like how the smell of alcohol. So if, if you're sensitive to that, please 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 go ahead and, and please wear a mask before doing this. Um, I didn't because it doesn't really bother me too much, especially since it's real quick. It's not it doesn't take us very long to do this process, but well. It doesn't take me very long to do this process because you'll be watching it at super fast speed. So let's go ahead and get all these screws out now too. That's a lot of screws. So now you can actually peel this off and get to the actual sheet and get that off. And make sure you throw this in the trash. So next, same thing that we did with the top part of the vat. Just want to clean this off. Get all the resin off of it. Just make it nice and clean. The cleaner you keep your stuff, the the better it'll be for you. Well, the nicer everything will look. And then do the same thing with the other one. Cool. And let's see. Yeah, let's, let's just give them a quick alcohol spritz here. And get some new, a new fresh one. And let's get it. Let's get it on nice and clean. Just for your own sanity. Don't play when it comes to resin. So now, there's an easy way to identify which way these go together. So, do my best to show you here. This is the part that the screws into the other half of the vat. So you can see these bigger, slightly larger holes here that are divided in. They're nice and divided versus the opposite side is just it's just literally a hole. Versus these guys have it nice, nice and chamfered there. So this is the part that will be visible. The screw heads are visible at the bottom of the vat. Oh my goodness, I'm struggling trying to get this angle right. 
Uh, so just so you know, so it goes on this way. So this is the bottom essentially of what we're about to do. So you want to put this down facing down, this side facing down, and then this side, if you can see here, it has three little screws. These two holes are going to be the ones where you actually put the screws in through and tighten, tighten here. And then this is the other side of this guy. So the one that we're facing downwards right now. Uh, so it's going to clamp everywhere, as you can see. So it's essentially going to look like this. Just make sure it's nice and aligned or else it won't do that. There we go. Once it's nice and aligned, you can see that all the holes line up properly and it looks nice and it's nice and tight, nice and nice and sealed there. Come on, come on camera. I'm struggling enough. All right. So since this is the bottom and this is essentially the top right now, we're just going to put this one to the side for a second. All right. So now comes this guy. So again, it doesn't have any holes. You know, even the one for the manufacturer for the printer doesn't come with holes. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to align it as best as you can where there's enough around the area and then put the other one on top. You're going to make your own holes and then start screwing it together. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, get started on that and I'll try to be a little bit more detailed in what I'm talking about here in just a second. First things first though with one of these, you gotta take the blue stuff off. Should be a little lip. Right here, right about here. Here it is, right here. And then just peel that bad boy back. That smells so that that that, that smells. That sounds so nice. And then there's another protective film on this as well. And you wanna grab that and peel it back as well. Let's go ahead and Put this on and try to measure it out correctly. Okay, so. There we go. Oops. That looks pretty good. All right, so now you throw this bad boy right on top. Make sure you align your holes properly. Sorry if my head got in the way there. It looks pretty good. Okay. So now what I like to do is to take one of the sizes that you were using on your actual screwdriver and use the pointed end to kind of pop the corners. So I start off by doing this guy right here, one of these over here, or these two here, and then these, and then these down here, and then screwing. Screwing it in, but don't tighten it all the way down. You want it to just be, you know, snug-ish, not tight, just just enough to like hold to hold itself together. And that way you have four, and then you can pop the rest of the holes without having to worry that the sheet's gonna move around all over the place. Uh, so just start off with, with two for now, so this corner and this corner. That way it doesn't move around too much without you noticing. So let's go ahead and do that. Just want to push it. Oh, you see how I moved it there on accident? That's okay. And then push. This one was this side. So let's do this corner here. There we go. All right. So now let's get those screws in those spots. And that way it moves around less before we start popping the rest of these holes. So again... You want this to be just barely starting to clamp down um, without it going tight, without you tightening it all the way. Uh, this has to be tightened in a very specific way so that it tightens it properly or else you can have, you're going to have resin all over the place. So just there. Okay. So now it's going to be easier to go ahead and pop, 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 pop. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we can get this part screwed in. Uh, let me 
So you want to get all the screws in, but you don't want them tight. You just want them to be essentially flush with the other parts of, of, the, of the bracket so that then you can go in and tighten them how you're supposed to tighten them. guys last one and then I can talk about here how to properly tighten these go back a little bit on that one all right so I have seen a couple of videos where they say that this part doesn't really matter I've seen other videos where they say it does matter I'm just gonna go with the safest route and just do it instead of not doing it so this is what I do so you want to follow essentially a zigzag pattern uh, if any, if you've ever tuned a drum, uh, like a like any kind of a drum, you know that you're supposed you can't just go around in the circle. You have to go one, then the one across, then the one uh, a, a side to that, and then across from that. And then it's essentially just a zigzag pattern. So you go, for example, from here to this guy, then from this guy to this guy, then from this guy to this guy, and then that you just follow that pattern all the way through. Uh, but given that this has four sides and it's not a circle it's a little bit tricky so what I like to do is I'll go here and then I'll go to this guy over here on this side instead of this one down here go to this one and then from this one I move to this corner here now from this one I'll move to the other one next to this guy and then I'll move down and then I'll move over to this one and then from this one I go to here and then I just try to keep it so that I'm tightening them down all evenly and if it takes you what I like to do is I'd like to do like a turn in a half ish so like one turn and then a half a turn and then move on to the next one and just repeat the process until they're all tight and then once I I'm confident that they're all tight I just go back in in a row and just make sure that they're all nice 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 and tight uh, just before I, I move on to the next step so let's go ahead and do that now you can hopefully follow along in the video and hopefully I don't mess this up, but it's a little, it's just a little bit tricky to do it with this many screws in such a weird way, but uh, it's probably what's best. So let's go ahead and do that now. Got a little confused there, but I, I got it. I think I've got all the screws now, so let's go ahead and just check them. All right, so clearly I missed quite a bit of them. So now they're all they are they're all pretty tight now. So now you're left with this a little loose, and then but you also have this guy. So this is where you would cut it off with. Uh, an exacto knife, a, a box cutter, a knife, uh, one of these little edger thingies, whatever they're called. Um, I find that this works pretty well. Um, it's the it's the little blade that comes with bamboo printers. Uh, you just need to get it started. That's that's literally all. So find an edge here, cuts it pretty nicely, and then you just kind of. follow the the metal edge here so let's go ahead and do that see how it's like sometimes it gets a little bit stuck you want to get as nice of a cut as you can there we go all right so it's essentially just cutting the little excess off. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just like to be as good as I can be. All right, so get all the scraps out of the way. You can clean this now if you would like. You could also clean it after you put on the other part, but I like to be thorough, so. And this stuff attracts dust like crazy because it's so 
what is the word? Uh, it's so staticky. So I like to just kind of make sure I get all the stuff off of it. Get it nice and clean, ready to go for the next part. And you want to try to be as careful as possible because if you break this, now you're just going to have to restart. Or if you dent it just a little bit, you're going to have to restart. Uh, just for safety, in case, you know, it ends up spilling, you're good. Don't want it to, don't want it to spill on your printer. So it's clean-ish, and now let's go ahead and get the other part. All right, so here it is. Uh, it's time to put it onto this part of the vat. This part of the vat is still a little gross, so I'm just going to run my little cleaning thing on it. On the inside, on the outside, everywhere in between. Just get it nice and clean, you know, to the point where you're happy with it. It's going to get resin in it anyways again, so it's not like it really matters. All right, so remember how I told you there was a right and a, the, a top and a bottom side? So this is the top side for, for getting started. This is the top. Now it's the bottom, so now you want to flip it, and you're going to want to align all of the holes okay so now we have to puncture it yet again uh, use a small Phillips head or a small needle or something to get it perforated and now that it's attached there's no no issue with you thinking that this thing's gonna flop around so I like to take it off and then just go ahead and pop pop all the holes in so let's do that Be sure not to stab yourself when you're doing that. So, same logic applies to this guy, uh, except you're gonna have two bigger ones, or four bigger ones in the corners now. So what I'd like to do is again mount them flush. Uh, make sure that when you're when you're screwing this in, this doesn't start to go down because you need to wait for that. So let's go ahead and get our our other screws back. Here and let's go ahead and just attach. All right. So you see how these are nice and flush, and this thing isn't being pushed down just yet. It's still nice and loose. Now we have to follow that same method again, which is and try to. You want to try to essentially tighten this down as evenly as possible, but doing I, for this I like doing a whole turn and then moving to the next one a whole turn and just doing it over and over again until everything's nice and tight. So let's go ahead and do that. They should all be tight now. I know I went kind of all over the place. It's hard to keep track for me at least. So I'm just going to go around in a circle and make sure that they're all good to go. All right, they're all good. Now for the final part, which is the last couple of screws. All right, and give it the, the drum test. You want it to sound like a like a, like a tuned drum. Have some have some resistance, and then just go ahead. And, I like to clean it one last time with alcohol. So once it's on, you just want to make sure there's no like dents, dings, scrat, deep scratches on it uh, before you go ahead and. Call it done. To reset your PFA, you just have to go to your settings, device self tests, and then just tap on the release film usage count at the top and it'll reset it back to zero. That's it. All right, guys, and that's that's everything. So it's just a couple of screws. Uh, well, it's more than a couple. It's a lot of screws and it's a lot of patience and screwing little by little and things like that. But just so you guys know, um, not just so you guys know, if you guys feel that your FEP should be replaced, do not wait till last minute to replace it. It's much better that as soon as you're worried about it, 
you know, maybe you see something on there like a, a deeper scratch or, or, or something that could potentially become a, a much larger issue down the road. It's better to switch it out sooner rather than later. Instead of waiting till that thing tells you that it's time to switch it out and you see this thing that you're like, man, that, that could eventually turn into a problem. It's better to just go ahead and switch it out because if it does become a problem before the machine tells you that it's time to switch out the, the sheet and you get resin all over your machine, that's that's a much larger expense than buying a whole new box of of those guys right over there the fep i point that way because mine are stored back here <laughs> but it's it's much cheaper to just buy another pack of of the sheets than it is to buy a whole new machine potentially or all new insides taking it apart cleaning it and then putting it all back together that could take you a lot longer and chances of it working after that aren't always the best because you might have missed one thing or plugged something in the wrong way and then you have to go back and redo it I'm going down a rabbit hole. If you feel like your sheet needs to be replaced, just go ahead and replace it. It doesn't matter that if it's halfway through its life or you just got it, uh, started printing on it, and something looks like it could become a problem. If it eases your mind like it eases mine to just switch it out, just switch it out. I'd rather spend the $30 on a pack of five, I think it's $30 on a pack of five, than I think it's like $200 or $180 for a new screen. And then on top of that, a new motherboard, if you get uh, resin on the motherboard, and then cleaning all the insides out, taking all the screws apart, taking your machine apart. I'd rather just, you know, buy another pack of, that's a pack of five. I'd rather buy a new pack of five if I need it than to buy a new screen, new light source, a new motherboard, new everything on the inside, and essentially have a brand new machine with an old shell. So go ahead, just replace it. If you feel like you need to replace it, don't wait till that thing tells you if you, if you, if you find something that is a little bit concerning. But if there's nothing concerning on it, uh, just switch it out when when the Saturn for Ultra lets you know. Or if you're somebody who's very well experienced with resin printers, you know when to go ahead and switch that out. So don't need to tell you anything else. But anyways, guys, if you like videos uh, like this one that I'm making, please do leave me a thumbs up and a comment down below. It really does help. I'm trying to make slow and small improvements here on every single video that I do. Keep changing the camera angle because I think that some areas look a little bit nicer than others. And right now you can see my door. But yeah, so let me know uh, what you guys think of this video. If you're interested in my Saturn IV Ultra or any of my FDM printer uh, settings, uh, there's going to be a link down below to my Patreon. Uh, you can become a member, all members. Uh, all paid members get access to that sort of stuff, and then the higher up you go, the more benefits you get, uh, including getting mentions in these videos. Uh, big, big old, big old words uh, with your name on it. Uh, it's just to support the channel. All, all that money is literally going to go back into buying lights, uh, things to test out, and, and stuff like that. So if you guys are interested, uh, the link to my Patreon will be down below. All my socials will be down below if you guys want to follow me everywhere else. I am not super great at uploading things on all of my social media but I'm, I'm definitely working on it my wife gives me a lot of stuff she's like hey you're not posting what's going on nobody knows what's happening nobody knows what you're doing so i will do my best to post things on there i am going to be working on getting some more resins to test and then make a video on those resins somebody gave me a great idea on what to do uh, but there will be another video hopefully being filmed at some point talking about well, at some point some point soon within the next week or so about talking about water washable resins versus uh, alcohol washed resins and what I think and why I use one versus the other. Uh, spoiler alert, I have switched essentially all to alcohol at the moment and I'm not no longer using any water washable. Well, I still have, I'm just not buying anymore. But stay tuned for that video so I can tell you all about that and why the hell this is going on and why I flipped like some, some people actually flipped the other way to go from alcohol to water washable. I went the opposite direction. But anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video again. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what I can improve on. Let me know how I am terrible at making YouTube videos. Leave it all down below. It doesn't matter whether your comment is positive or negative. I will read them all and then try to make improvements based on that. Uh, if it's within reason. You know, I'm not going to do something crazy like, you know, I don't know. It's crazy stuff. I don't know. I can't think of anything crazy at the moment. It's really late. So I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye everybody. And when I feel like this, I'm immortal. When I feel like this, I'm immortal. When I 